Hi everyone. Okay, um, I'm going to try to keep these videos a little shorter um, so I can upload them in smaller chunks. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the notion of parallel transport, which um, which we covered on Friday before spring break. So the idea is it gives us a way to generalize the notion of parallel um, beyond just the case of a plane. So in a plane, two lines are parallel if one is uh, a translate of the other. And as you all know, on a sphere, uh, there's no such thing as parallel, right? Like any geodesics will intersect. Um, so we can't talk about parallel, but we'll talk about something kind of similar, which lets us do some interesting things. So uh, setup is we let L be a geodesic. Again, we're kind of thinking on the sphere here, uh, or hyperbolic space as well. I mean, you can also do this on the plane. Um, but for now, the, the location you should have in mind is the sphere. So let's let L be a geodesic and let R be a ray. Um, or maybe you prefer the idea of a vector, but really I'm just talking about some line segment, some, some small piece of a line uh, which starts at a point of L. At a point at a point on L, I should say. On the geodesic. So the picture is, you know, I'm here's part of my sphere. Here's a geodesic. And I've got a ray R coming out of there. This is L. Okay, that's the setup. Um, I don't really care how long the ray is. All I care about is the angle that it makes with respect to the geodesic L. So let's call that angle alpha. Um, so I haven't defined anything yet. Um, I'm going to define parallel transport. And the idea is what I want to do is sort of translate I'll put it in quotes because there's no such thing as translation on a sphere, but what I want to do is the next best thing to translate this vector r along the geodesic L. So if I if I move it to the right, I get some new vector r prime. And the important thing is uh, I want to keep that angle the same. That's really all I care about is the angle of this vector with respect to the geodesic L. Okay. And if I do that, then this new vector is called a parallel transport of the original. Okay, so um, R prime is a parallel transport of R along L, so it depends on all these things, R and L. Um, if R prime is obtained from R by translating along L. Of course, translating doesn't make sense on a sphere. It's kind of replaced by rotation but you're moving it along the geodesic, um, keeping the, the bottom of the vector touching the geodesic. Okay, and then, and then the key fact is, uh, you know, the, the only thing we really care about is uh, the angle of our prime with respect to L is the same as the angle of R with respect to L. That's that's the key, the key fact. Um, okay, so on a plane, this looks much simpler. 
I'm just translating along the geodesic. Some amount, it's up to me until I get a new vector, and this angle is the same. Uh, sort of more globally on a sphere, we are, let's say our geodesic L is the equator. In this case, rotation along L means I'm rotating about, you know, if, if L is the equator, I'm rotating about the north-south axis. And again, all I care about is that that angle stays the same. Um, but of course, like, th these vectors, R and R prime, are not really parallel because, as you know, if I was to extend these geodesics. Let's see if I can do this in an accurate way. They, they would intersect, right? Because any two great circles are going to intersect. Here's the intersection points in this case. So they're not really parallel. R and R prime are not actually parallel. But um, we could sort of say they're locally parallel. If we, if we stick close to the geodesic L, we should think of R and R prime as sort of parallel. So this gives a local notion of parallel. Um, okay. Uh, why do we care about this? How is this useful? Well. Stay tuned, check out the next video uh, where we will talk about holonomy. And that's really the, the main use of this. And holonomy is something that's actually quite interesting.